I met Suge Knight by being in that room where Kevin put me in to write to his songs. Suge would come in and just hear the, I had, they had a double tape, a double cassette. And I would put my tapes in there and play them and sing. It was really a real to real room. So I was in there and behind a whole lot of real to real tape machines. And they just put me a chair in there with a, with a double tape deck machine or whatever. And I would just write to people's tracks. You know, particularly really Kevin's at that time. Suge would periodically stick his head in the door when he'd hear me in their practice and just look. And I, ne and I never knew that this was Suge, right? This is a J Mix exclusive. So uh, I never knew that this was Suge, right? In my mind, you know how we just, and I told you about your voice? I thought you would, I always thought Suge was a real, real dark man in my mind when I heard about Suge Knight and this aggressive guy. In my mind, I always saw him when I meet him, he's going to be this big, dark, dark guy. Yeah. So when he pushed in and looked every time and nodded his head at me, I never knew I was nodding at Suge Knight. <laughs> he, was, he was just coming in the studio that he was, that he leased, you know, and seeing this guy in there and hearing me singing and playing whatever, uh, doing whatever I was doing. I just, I didn't know it was shit. Hey, what's up, bro? I was just saying hey to a brother, you know, till I heard somebody outside the door one day when he pushed it open, they, I heard a few people saying, Suge, sure, they trying to show him something and everybody's trying to get a little of his time. And I said, that Suge night all this time? You know, so um, that's how I actually, that was, that's how I met. Uh, just him nodding, but, actually meeting him look what happened kevin lewis was playing me he was playing me he was playing a lot of people the emotions and all that and uh he, he played games and stuff and i found out that he was trying for me not to meet you he had a young act called cg and her brother i forget his name Salik or something like that, and he, he was playing on this show called Saved by the Bell, right? Uh, a TV yeah. series. Oh yeah, I he remember played, very Yeah, he, he played, I forgot his role. But, um, so Kevin was playing me, man. He was playing me. He was getting me to write for this girl, and he even had me write some stuff with emotion. So he's, he's turned on now too that I've been writing to his tracks. He's like, oh yeah, man. So I'm there early every morning, and I'm writing for this act, CG, right? Yeah. And uh, he's telling me Suge's enjoying me. Suge, we, we're setting up this meeting. Suge's excited about you and all this stuff like that. And I'm like, oh yeah, really? So, you know, I'm getting there early and then, uh, but he would keep me in this room, in that room and he wasn't doing no introductions, and I started wondering what's going on. You know, I'm writing to all these songs. He's telling me everybody's excited. But a certain period of time started going by, and I started doubtful about it. So one day, I'm in Studio A's kitchen, and I'm I'm making some of what I lived on when I was there. Because sometimes I would be broke, and uh, most of the time I would be broke. And I lived on uh, microwave popcorn and the fountain soda, because that was free all the time. It was always microwave popcorn going there, and fountain soda, and whatever any of the stars left over in the refrigerator, yeah. you know. So a lot of times, that was good stuff, though. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, they never got to it. You know, it was <laughs> shrimp and stuff, you know, so. Um, I'm living, I'm making popcorn and whatever like that, and I look up at the monitor on the refrigerator, and Suge is pulling up with his entourage. I could see him in the parking lot pulling up, with, and, uh, Something told me, man, I'm about to go out here and meet him, you know? Yeah. So I went out the studio there. I went to go meet him. And uh, when he got out the car, he, he always, I don't know why, his eyes always locked on me. He, he looked over at me. He wondered who I am, this new face at his studio, I guess, you know? So I'm there, and this time I said, hey, Shug, can I talk to you? And when I made an advance, seemed like two or three of his homeboys was like, you know, like they was ready to pounce on me. Yeah. 
you know. He said, no, 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 Tom. So I walked, I said, look, bro, name's D Harp, man. Uh, I write, I sing, you know, and uh, I, I said, the difference between me and Babyface is that he's paid and I'm not. That's what I told you, exactly. I said, I said the difference between me, I, I write same kind of songs, same kind of melodies and stuff like that. And he gave me a card. He gave me a card and he said, look, man, I got a little run to make here right now, but I'm gonna come back in an hour and I wanna hear what you do, right? And he gave me the card. As he's handing me the card, Kevin Lewis is walking out of the studio. He didn't see that, I didn't went out here and met Suge, right? Yeah. So he sees Suge, he said, man, Shug told me something about Vanilla Ice right then. He said, remember the, the, the deal that he got on Summer Woo? He said, I had a lot to do. I said, okay, all right. He said, I'll be here in an hour and I'm gonna listen to you, right? As soon as he pulls off, Kevin Lewis walks up to the seat, said, uh, man, what'd he give you? And when I showed him the card that he gave me, Kevin Lewis said, man, go, just something like, man, go, go finish that song I asked you. To so that made me feel like, wow. like he must have gave me the bulls, you know, yeah, the yeah, bull card. I must, have, yeah. yeah. You you got you didn't get the real card. You got something he give, you know. Like I feel, oh, at first I thought I wow I got shit, but when he did like, okay, you got the peon card, okay. Yeah. So in an hour, like he said, he came back. Should came back in three dudes. Cause let's show you with people. Man, they ran for Suge. So when Suge said find that dude that I was talking to, three dudes, three grown men came looking for me and I was in studio. Listen, now I'm in Studio B's kitchen making popcorn and soda again. And I'm putting it in and uh, these, hey, hey man, you the dude Suge was talking to, right? No. I said, yeah, he said, hey man, he wanna holler at you. I said, as soon as this part, he said, man, that was that popcorn, man. Suge wanna holler at you. Every, all of them want to be pleasing or be the one that went and got him or something like that, you know? So, uh, I, okay, leave the popcorn alone. Let's go see, you know? He took me into that same room with the real to reels and I sung a song to him that I was writing. And at the time I was working with a guy who just passed, a dear, dear friend of mine. His name is Wilton Felder. He's a jazz musician out of a, one of the most famous jazz groups called the Crusaders. And uh, he was, I was doing demos with him before Death Row. He was helping me prepare something for somebody could help me. And um, I did a song for Suge. When he got to the hook, he was, he stopped, he said, man, you got a job, just like that. He stopped the tape. Man, you got a job. Be here tomorrow with your social security and your ID and your whatever like that, right? Yeah. He said, be here at seven o'clock tomorrow. And uh, I said, all right, you know, all right, you know. He said, I walked out the door and Suge turned around and grabbed me by the pockets. Serious, he just grabbed, he I walked out the door and he did just like this. He said, how you living? And I said, I'm living. He said, man, how you living? And I thought oh, I knew what he meant. I said, man, I got about $4 on me. He said, I got something for you tomorrow afternoon. Before you get here tomorrow night with your social, I got something at the office for you. I went to the office, I had a check for a thousand dollars. Oh my goodness, that was like, man, I didn't got a thousand dollars and I ain't even did nothing yet. But he believed that I could, you know, like I could deliver. I went there and, he, and, and when I got there that afternoon, I told him what my name was. He said, you the guy that Sugar was talking to yesterday? He said, yeah, right on the desk was a thousand dollar check. Yeah, so, uh, but that made a big difference to you. Oh, I man, he gave me a thousand. Look, you got to remember, I was in my girl, I was using my girlfriend's car then. I was always a single parent, so it was me and my son, and we had moved in with a girlfriend of mine at the time. And um, she was doing most everything, so that thousand really made me a, a, a cool guy to come home and just, hey, you know, let's, let's go grab the grocery cart. Let's go to one of these supermarkets and fill up this, these cabinets in this refrigerator. And you know, that, that, like, wow, I was able to, that was the beginning. But uh, Suge did that like two or three more times before I actually had a contract. 
he would just stop me in the hallway. What's up? And I said, oh, shit, I ain't even spent what you get. He said, go to the office tomorrow. And then still, I ain't even spent, go to the office. I go and there'd be a check there again, it'd be a check there again. He did about three times. So now this is really getting good, you know. This is a J Mix exclusive. What up with Shadow?